Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 19th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. The US CERT is reminding Windows administrators to disable NetBuys and SMB version 1. NetBuys, of course, hasn't really been required since Windows XP and in Windows Vista with the introduction of SMB version 2, Microsoft also phased out SMB version 1. This does match guidance from Microsoft. Microsoft has published knowledge base articles years ago ago regarding turning off uh, NetBuys and SMB version 1, but apparently you assert, uh, figured that they should remind users of this because uh, some of the exploits uh, released by Shadow Broker recently take advantage of flaws in these protocols. And then we do have a new RFC. 8021 uh, that talks about some of the issues with atomic fragments in IPv6. Now, atomic fragments isn't really a new problem. A lot has been written about it, but uh, this RFC does summarize some of the security problems, in particular with regards to denial of service with these fragments. Just as a quick uh, primer about IPv6 and fragmentation, in IPv6 routers no longer fragment. Instead, the router will just send an ICMP error message back to the source asking the source to fragment packets in case the packets are too large to be forwarded to the next network segment. In addition, IPv6 does not allow any network segments with an MTU of less than 1280 bytes. Now, what has happened in the past is that in particular, if you tunnel IPv6 over IPv4, that you may run into network segments that don't have an MTU of 12 on 80 bytes. So what can happen in this case is that a source receives an ICMP error message telling it to fragment the packet with an MTU of less than 12 on 80 bytes. That's not going to happen. What instead happens is that the source will send what's considered an atomic fragment. An atomic fragment does have a fragmentation extension header, but uh, the offset is zero and uh, the more fragment flag is cleared. So you have a situation that sort of looks like, well, what you had in IPv4, where the IP datagram does uh, contain these fragmentation field, and then it's again up to the router to fragment. The reason this is done is that the assumption is that the fragmentation will really happen on IPv4 and then the fragment ID in this fragment header, header can be used to derive a fragment ID for IPv4. So far, so good. The other problem is that it is of course possible to spoof these ICMP error messages and that in addition to that, uh, IPv6 receivers are required to drop overlapping fragments. So an attacker could spoof an error message that will notify the sender to send these atomic fragments. And in addition, the attacker could then spoof fragments with the same fragment offset, the same fragment ID, and send them to the recipient. Since the fragment offset is known in this case, the fragment ID is not necessarily a random, the packet would then get dropped by the recipient, leading to a denial of service condition. The recommendation put forward by the RFC is essentially get rid of these atomic fragments and ignore any ICMP error messages that do advertise an MTU of less than 1280 bytes. Seems to make sense. Of course, it's now a matter of actually having that implemented. April last year, researchers released details about flaws in the Image Magic library. These flaws then became known as Image Tragic and did allow for remote code execution in numerous web applications. As was disclosed, now not even Facebook was safe from this particular flaw. A researcher did identify a flaw that did allow 
arbitrary code execution within Facebook by taking advantage of this vulnerability. As usual, Facebook was quite quick in reacting to this report. It did fix the vulnerability within about a week. And now the researcher discovering the flaw did provide a rather nice write-up about how he identified it and how it could have been exploited. And Malwarebytes found some malware on OS X systems that may have actually been in circulation for a few years now without being discovered. Apparently, this malware has been used in targeted attacks against some biomedical facilities. It does use some fairly ancient system calls even out of pre-OS 10 days, which is why Malwarebytes does believe that this particular backdoor has been used for several years. Of course, uh, people don't look typically very carefully on Macs for malware like this, which is why it may have survived so long on these infected systems. And Oracle today released its critical patch update for the quarter. As usually, it affects a wide range of different applications released by Oracle. A total of 270 new security fixes are affected for most users. Of course, Java is the one to watch. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.